Welcome to another episode of Community Voices. I hope everybody's been doing well and doing good. As March comes to a close, we continue to dedicate another episode of CV to Women's History Month, celebrating and honoring her heritage and you know, the past that makes her who she is today and her present that will propel her future and just really honing in and paying homage to those moments. This is the perfect way to close out the series, in my opinion. I'm extremely excited, especially when I'm joined by a fellow Texan. I get extremely, extremely excited. So she's an actress, a director, a host, a creator. And when I say creator, I don't mean just like any creator. I mean like one of the world's fastest growing creators. She's an award-winning creator. I could go on all day. Liza Koshi, thank you for joining us for episode of Community Voices. How are you feeling today? Are no. You? No, thank you. I'm doing amazing. This is my birthday weekend. It's in Women's History Month. It's on Easter. He is risen. I have risen too. My Saturn's returning. Life is good. I am blessed. I am so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. I, I love it. I love it. Thank you. I'm just as excited. I actually want to start off with the first question, which was wishing you a happy early birthday. It's a big deal. Um, you know, I've listed off your accomplishments and you know, you're still so young and it really is a blessing, but also a testament to how much work you put in. I mean, like your dedication to the craft and your skill. I mean, you've honestly lived out multiple lives and your dream while still dreaming. I'd love to know, you know, from everything that you've done, you went to U of H in Houston. <laughs> Absolutely, we, lo we love a college dropout. We love a college dropout. Um, from HLU, from Houston to LA, uh, that's a big change because, you know, you weren't just moving, you're moving to pursue your career. Take me back to what that was like and what was that con what would that conversation be like uh, thinking about, you know, the Liza of today compared to the Liza then who was pursuing her dreams and making that big move? What would that conversation be like? Oh my gosh, me then to me now would be like, you're lying. You're <laughs> doing what? With, with whom? You're who? It's you. Like, you are everything that I didn't know I could become. And I'm so glad I obeyed the chaos. I obeyed the instinct to move to LA, to be surrounded by my resources and fellow artists and creatives, to just be a sponge and observe and be on sets and learn. And I'm so thankful for being the youngest child who was the experiment of the family. I have two older sisters. So speaking of Women's History Month, I have to like give credit where credit is due. Those women paved a path for me to be the playful person that I am. So I got to play while, you know, they had to obey the rules of the household. <laughs> so I'm thankful to them, but it really was my father whose blessing I had, which is an uh, unlikely, you know, stereotypical story of like, an Indian father wants you to explore this creative career? No, that's unheard of. I was, you know, forced to be academically focused most of my life. And then when he realized my nose was not in the books and it was very entrepreneurial and it was very creative and it was interested in acting and singing and cannot sing, but always love it. <laughs> um, it, it became, you know, my 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 father's purpose to encourage me to do what I love. And I'm so thankful for that. So it was, I believe, a summer between, it was the gap year, summer between freshman and sophomore year that my dad was picking me up from LA. I'd just gone there for a job. I came back just glowing. And, you know, he took a step back and was like, do you want to take a gap year and explore what life is like out there for you while all this is happening? And the this happening was, Vine was YouTube. I had uploaded three videos in Houston and Vine was really popping off and it had just created the Revine feature. So virality was happening on the platform. So things would take off and just take on a life of its own and spread to other corners of the internet. And I got so lucky and I'm so sorry that I tortured y'all throughout all those corners. I was unavoidable for a second. My bad. My bad. I didn't choose that. Y'all did. <laughs> but anyways, I, um, I was... It was a minute that I was on Vine and and my dad, you know, saw this love and this passion and just fostered it. And that is the biggest blessing I could have ever had was a parent encouraging such chaos. So uh, I say obey the chaos often now, because whenever you're feeling that urge or that creativity or that surge, whether that be at midnight or whatever it is, just obey it and follow it because your instinct and your, your gut is talking to you to create something or do something or connect with this person or send a message and draft the email at midnight and then send it at 8 a.m. Whatever it is, 
obey the chaos in that. <laughs> um, but yeah, right that, <laughs> say again. You're giving out secrets right there. That, that scheduling the email. I'm giving out secrets. <laughs> take it, take it, truly. And you know, here's another secret. My dad reminded me of this quote last night. Uh, it's something that he used to say when he's in sales. So this will very much sound like a salesman, but uh, he used to say to his sales team, you know, you wake up every day unemployed. And as a creative, as a creative that lived through a pandemic and a strike, uh, I wake up every day unemployed. So <laughs> there's an excitement around that, right? There's there's a joy and there's a pursuit and there's energy behind that. Um, and I do, I wake up every day unemployed, give me a job, but it really is, it's, it's a new adventure to embark on whenever you think in that way. So to have a father that has instilled a lot of those beliefs in me and have a mother that's creative herself, she literally, she painted this uh, painting right over here. I'm gonna expose her real quick. That's my mother. That's fire. Thank you. <laughs> That's my mom. So like to have a free bird, both of them met in theater. They both really are just creative individuals and then birthed the theater kid. So I'm lucky. I'm very fortunate to have had the environment that allowed me to explore myself. Absolutely. And and I love that because I think one of the one of the key important things there is that like it is such a big shift in your life. I mean, to have such support at a pivotal time. I mean, there's so many roads and, and paths right there that, you know, you could have easily been on something where, you know, you felt discouraged or like came hardened, but you were really able to step into a new environment and a new place, feeling encouraged and feeling motivated. I love to know though, because even with that love, I'm sure, you know, you talk to your parents all the time, even with that love, in moments where you felt, you know, everything seemed so big or it was hard to kind of give yourself that support and that love and have faith during those challenging times, how did you manage to embrace the chaos in those times? Jesus, God, <laughs> faith. <laughs> it really is having that relationship with faith and knowing that I am protected and I am looked after and that there's this plan that I can try to make and God just laughs at it and then gives me something funnier to work with. Mm. And it's actually so funny. The other, <laughs> I've been thinking about this a lot recently. I've been recently feeling like in, as a creative, we go through these waves, right? Of feeling really tense and drawn in and like, no, I got to create just for me. And then you get really open and you, you become, you know, just more of a vessel of what the universe has to, you know, give to you. Mm. And I recently tightened up and I've just been recently opening back up again. And something that really made me open back up again was falling at the Oscars. <laughs> I fully like went to the Oscars. I was so excited to be welcomed by the Academy. I was like, I am going to be a woman in my divine femininity. I'm going to pose. I'm going to, huh, huh, concave. Like I am going to live so beautifully in this moment. And then I swear to you, I heard God say, it's gonna be good. Watch this. Bah! And then he just pushed me down. He did it. He did it. <laughs> pushed me down. And I fell on the carpet. And in that moment, I was like, man, you can plan all you want. And you just have to push whatever the universe has to give to you. And it turned out to be such a funny, sweet moment. And I'm so happy that happened. Um, but it really is. That was what happened. I went out to LA with a plan. And I couldn't follow it and I couldn't stick to it. And I really just led with my gut in terms of finding community, finding other creatives that had very like-minded principles or saw the world in, in, in a way that challenged the way that I saw mine and just tried to expand the more that I could to be on sets where, you know, I said yes to a job that I might not necessarily feel like was the right thing. But in that experience, I learned what wasn't for me or I learned you know, I might have been hired as an actor, but I realized the love that I might have as a director by watching the director do their job. So putting myself in in positions where I'm safely uncomfortable, meaning like I'm I'm, you know, just just challenged in a new way and just seeing the world through somebody else's lens and celebrating that too. So yeah, there you can always make a plan, but you know, I like to say that that director or that other actor or that producer, or that writer writing that joke off to the side challenged me to write better ones. And each one of those people, I feel like you can find your heroes in so many people. And your heroes are people who reveal things that are possible for you. 
and you don't realize that they're possible until you see it and it happens and they do it and they're the blueprint and you want to turn that on its head and do it in your own way. So there's a lot to be learned from opportunities that aren't for you, but to take them anyway and challenge yourself and learn from them is, is really helpful, really helpful. I, I love that. I love that. You, Sorry, you, I went on so many tangents, but thank oh, you for going with me. <laughs> um, you really spoke to that embracing piece and the way that you described it actually kind of like, like really fits you. I, I know it's our first time really talking, but I can see you have a certain energy about you that, uh, in a certain, it's like a certain level of like, you understand that, you know, this is my reality, but things are still working in my favor. Um, that kind of attitude and that kind of approach. And I love that you understood that so early. Um, there's like a growth and that there's a level of comfort that comes with putting yourself in these uncomfortable places and in, a, in a safe way, of course, you know, not like putting yourself in harm's way or operating from a place of like desperation, but stepping into knowing that this challenging moment is going to increase your faith and your self growth. Like those are so important. Absolutely. I appreciate you appreciating that. Thank you. <laughs> but definitely, I think, yeah, it expands your horizons. Can't ask for anything more better than to be a student of life. You know, keep learning. And speaking of being a student of life, um, I'm always studying the landscape of entertainment, social, um, just like the culture in general, because social entertainment, those worlds are so competitive. And you talked about, you know, believing in yourself and how, you know, how supportive your your father was and your sisters and, you know, just the, the support of Cassie, your family actually played in your life. Um, but when you were having those moments where, you know, these, these Hollywood moments, these big moments where, you know, it was just you and operating in these certain places where, you know, it was kind of hard to give yourself that support, give yourself that same base or practice that same faith. Um, can you kind of speak to the importance of keeping that, you know, really solid and good circle around you and the importance of some of the women in those circles that help support you? Oh, my gosh. The women, you know, when when I was speaking about heroes earlier, my brain went to Lucille Ball. I mm -hmm. loved I love Lucy growing up. I love like even not women, but Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton, like these old school, <laughs> like physical comedians. Um, but Lucille Ball, she really you paved a path, right? There wasn't, she was the blueprint for women in comedy. There wasn't a woman who was as brave as she is. And, and it's unleashed the beast within so many women to uh, pursue entertainment because she did it. And she even said so herself, her quote is, you know, I'm not funny, I'm brave. And mm -hmm. I relate to that so much. I don't think I'm funny. I think I'm fun. And I think I am brave. And I think I am unapologetic. <laughs> and I think that's exactly what she was too. So to take a page out of the books, out of the people, or take a page out of the books of the people that you love and admire is so helpful in writing your own story and discovering your own craft. Um, I think a lot of artists are, you know, like mimics of sorts. So if you can take little pieces of what you love about others, um, and discover your own identity. I think it's really helpful for the foundation of a young creative's career. But to go back to your question about women, sorry, tangent, uh, <laughs> my mother, <laughs> my mother, my sisters, they've encouraged me. They believed in me. My sister worked with me at one point and I hope to like, drag back into the chaos again. Um, but they are just big believers, big advocates, and so humbling. They will ground your ass the moment you start levitating. <laughs> you can't, you can't, you know, get too high when you have family around, right? Like you, you have them to ground you and they know who you really are and what you really need. Intuitively, they understand you. So to have those circles, so important. Have other, you know, people who have similar dreams or similar outlook, but then also find people who are in tech or are a lawyer or are doctors and my goodness, like do your gifts complement theirs and vice versa, like show up for, you, you know, each other in, in different ways. I'm speaking specifically about, about my brother-in-law, about my, my cousin um, who are doctors and I could not be the more opposite, you know, brain, <laughs> but, but, you know, surround yourself with people that are different than you, but also have a similar outlook, have similar moral values. Um, and that is family and that is faith. And that is, you know, friendships for me. So uh, I'm lucky, I'm very, very lucky, but luck favors the prepared. And I really had to be intentional about who I was spending my time with because you are the company you keep.
you are and will reflect who those individuals are. And I would love somebody to rub off on me who's smarter than me, you know? Like I don't read too many books. I need to read more. But if you've read a lot, give me the spark notes. <laughs> I'm gonna just hang out with you instead of reading that book and become smarter secondhand smoke. You know what I mean? Just keep going. <laughs> like it, it's Absolutely. it's yeah, important, very important to answer the question. I love that. And I love it because you know, she was that for you and now you're that for others, like for so many others. And I think, you know, that is so important because you really never know who is watching. And it's just so impactful to continue to just take that in and give it back, which is extremely, it's super powerful. That's the responsibility to give more than you take. And I took that from Lucy and I hope I multiply it tenfold and give it to others. That is the reason we're all here. Absolutely. I think you definitely are. And I think this is the perfect example. Uh, using your platform with Community Voices to give back to the community and have an impact. That's what we'll be doing today. Today we'll be donating to the Growth Opportunity Alliance, whose mission is to empower adolescent girls around the world through education and allowing them to achieve their full potential, which I absolutely love. Hold that deal into my heart. Uh, you had a lot of experience with the organization and community work in general. Can you kind of speak to the importance of giving back to the community and really working with the Girls Opportunity Alliance in specific, in particular? Yes, yes. I mean, the community gave to me, right? Like they gave me the baton. I'm trying to do my damn best and run as fast as I can and, you know, give it to the next person who's been training and strength, uh, strengthening themselves to take the baton and carry it too. It's a relay race of life and you're just clearing the path and creating the path for others. And that's, yeah, full circle community giving back is so very important. Um, Girls Opportunity Alliance, specifically, I had a wonderful experience with them in Vietnam. They are a uh, part of the Obama Foundation, Girls Opportunity Alliance, and they work with another organization called Room to Read. And Room to Read helps prepare high school girls, specifically at an all girls school in Vietnam is where I went and visited. Um, and I got to see how they empower young women, how they tell them how to save up money for college, what jobs are available for them at what age. I didn't have any of that in my high school experience. I had a great one, but I did not know shit about paying tuition and what, you know, costs entailed of dormitories. And they were empowering women to have, you know, if there was a group of women that wanted to pursue a creative career, they would pull them to the side and, you know, help them understand how to speak with their parents about, uh, you know, what is it? Just just having the conversations that they need to have in order to help their parents understand them and their dreams. And it just empowered women to dream. It was so cool to see hands on in person. So I'm grateful to Girls Opportunity Alliance for giving me such an experience. And the only thing I can do is give back. So I'm so happy. Thank you so much to you all, JD Sports and to Converse too. I recognize that that donation is coming from y'all. So thank you very, very much. Um, I know that they'll appreciate it and it'll go a long way and I've seen where it's gone. So yeah, it's incredibly important to give back to the community and empower other young women, future Lu Lucille Balls or future doctors, future lawyers, future women in STEM, you know, that they have the power to pursue what they want to do. To LA transition, that big move and, and what it was like. And, you know, during these conversations, I really love tapping in with people's minds because during these convos, I thought there's just certain unlocks that can really happen about a person's life that really can impact somebody else's life. Um, and for you, you know, we talked about the importance of faith and self-belief and supportive circle. But there, is there one moment in particular you can really think about or hone in on that really helped you get to where you're at today? And like a moment that, you know, even today you still could think about it and it's still as impactful and, you know, you, you still really feel it. Um, if there is just one moment, there could be multiple moments, but if there is just one moment, what would that be? Man, I like, I've been quoting a lot of stuff recently because I've been reading and listening to a lot. So I'm just kind of a sponge of all the other inspirers that have been speaking to me. So I don't have an original thought in my brain, but <laughs> there was a quote recently that I heard, uh, of, you know, you're one decision away from changing your entire life. Um, and that can feel like a lot of pressure, like, okay, but which decision is it? Which one changes my life for the better? I would like that one. <laughs> like, I, I, I understand the pressure of that, but also like the joy in choice, like to choose your, your, uh, happiness, 
happiness is a choice, just sidebar. Um, but I really do think that moment where I was at the uh, airport, my dad was picking me up and he just saw me just verbal diarrhea about how much joy I had in working in LA and him saying, you know, do you want to explore that? Mm. And having that permission, that permission granted moment was life-changing that mm. switched everything for me. And I think it just like opened me up to this world of opportunity and that I can make this an actual thing. It was supposed to be a gap year though. So <laughs> I will say it was going to be a gap year. It's been a gap decade. Um, I don't know how my dad feels about that, but I think he's proud. Absolutely. I think your dad is proud. And I mean, like, definitely would take that. He definitely would take that extended gap for sure. Um, I want to ask you one more thing before we go, because, you know, I want to, I hate to end this convo because it's been such a super dope and amazing convo, but I have to respect your time. And I also have to go listen to that Beyonce album we talked about. <laughs> so um, my last question for you, and I think this is really important in today's day and age, when we think about, you know, the content space and the social world and everybody trying to be authentic while learning to you know you know how do they be themselves while also trying to be different um or understanding what that even looks like um can you kind of like you know as one of those pioneers who, who's been to those things and fought with those thoughts um what advice could you give to someone who is trying to navigate through all those thoughts and through all those things like how what advice could you give to someone for it oh if you are trying to be different you might be the same as everybody else mm, that's a good trying one. to become different or be different you already are there are so many tiny minutiae little details of life that you have lived that are so specific to you and there's been this is a random aspect but there's been 110 billion lives ever lived human lives there are nine billion people on earth and your story is so unique. Everything that's happened in the line makes you so incredibly different. And people should embrace that. That me being a mixed kid who's half Indian, half German, raised Mennonite in Houston, Texas, this widely diverse cultural landscape, uh, that specificity and then even more branches from that, you know, uniqueness is something I try to embrace. And my own personality, personality, if you break it down, it's personal reality. It's how you digest your reality, right? I know, it blew my mind too. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Well, I, no, I, I never thought about it like that. That's crazy. It's the way you, it's, what, it's your relationship with reality. The way you digest what is happening around you and the way you choose to react to it is your personality, which is, wild it slapped something into perspective for me <laughs> right down right down right now the it slapped sure. something into perspective for me for sure um of you know 90 percent or life is 90 percent how you react to it 10 percent what's happening to you so you know it, having that mentality is helpful too of like you know i i have choice in the situation i might not always have control i got to relinqu relinquish but i'm able to choose how i react to it um I forgot the question. <laughs> you, you forgot it, but you answered it perfectly. Like I, th I think that the piece was being that, you know, that being you is being different. And there are so many different people and lives being lived. You don't have to be different. You're already set up that way. So just continue to stay on that path. Don't try. Don't try. Like, don't try to stand out. You already do. So whatever it is that you actually love, foster that and continue that. And, you know, don't, you know, be inspired by others and maybe take a page out of their book, but then shut that book of theirs, turn off the phone and ask yourself what's missing in the world and how do I create it? And what is something that I love so much that I want to share it with everybody else? Ask yourself, what is the thing that makes you glow when you talk about it with your friends? Hang out with your friends in your community circles even more, right? I feel like sometimes as artists, you get shut down i have to make everything in a vacuum and there can there's the only you know the rise of the individual and it's it's just about me and my art nah shut up like go hang out have a drink talk like your friends will mirror to you damn you get really passionate about soul cycle like then then you realize you have a love for it and you can dive into it even further and fill your cup or you know 
develop an idea that you talked about with your friend. You know, it takes the, that community. It takes the people that love you for you and want to see you go far and are willing to, you know, celebrate the endeavors that you have as that personal reality changes. I'm not even going to add, I'm not even going to add on to that. That's the perfect way to close this episode. It's the perfect way to close out Women's History Month. Even though I feel weird saying close out Women's History Month because it's something that we should be doing like throughout the year. Um, but thank you so, so, so much. Um, I wish I could stay longer, but you know, my cheeks are already like hurting from laughing. Um, but this has been an amazing, amazing combo. Thank you so much for cutting out time to do this. Thank you, Devin Tyler. You have incredible transitions, may I say. It is hard to make things smooth, but you sound like Cowboy Carter between each song, and it is incredibly smooth and rhythmic the way you interview. So thank you so much. <laughs> now go listen note, to the album. Right, on that note, I'm out to go listen to the album. Thank y'all very much for tuning in to another episode of Community Voices. Until next time, take care. <laughs>